All right, here we go. Breezy, can I can I intro this? Absolutely. Right before this podcast started, Breezy tried to tell his dog to do something, and his dog looked at him and said, hell no, and just walked <laughs> right away. <laughs> Welcome into the Section 109 podcast. That is the definition of my life with that dog. Hilarious. We, we looked at him, and as soon as he realized I'd hit record and we, I couldn't move, he's, he's like, like, I'm doing what I want. <laughs> did, we ever, did we ever turn on the camera? Oh, yeah. Cool. I just missed that part. Yes, you did. Awesome. <laughs> but that's a, that's a new piece to this whole thing. So yeah, we did. That is that's one thing I've done before, not here or um, like with the podcast or for work, unfortunately. But I I have done an entire thing where I've talked to the camera for like my YouTube, and I was like, oh, finally I did good, and then I didn't and, record. And, and you didn't do good. Yep, that's an old man move right there. Oh <laughs> man, that could be a uh, it could be a thing we will do eventually. But knock on wood, today we did not. Unless I like get a text message or something that does something weird. But you know what? We're recording audio too. So if for some reason it's not on video, you know Breezy fucked something up. But we're here to talk about CFC not messing things up. That is true. In the Open Cup, in Des Moines. If you haven't listened, here's your chance to turn it off. If you haven't watched, 4-1 win for the good guys, for the boys in blue. Immediate thoughts. How you feeling, Jay? I'm feeling great, man. That was... That was great. I have my uh, like bits and pieces of the pitch that I like watching the most now after watching a few games and having sort of dissected my understanding for the team. Um, but as an overall performance, I thought last night was – or that wasn't last night, two nights ago. That was amazing. Yeah, so what are some of those key parts you're really enjoying watching? Uh, okay, if I just want to come out and say it immediately, my favorite part – I mean, think about the front three that we have uh, moving and like the way the ball's been moving and the goals that happen – but my favorite part of the pitch to watch right now is at the left back position. Yeah, JP. JP, dude, I'm having a lot of fun watching is it, him. Is it because of the? Uh, is it because like the, he's in the new Smurf in town? Dude, it's not the hair, which is funny because he said that last podcast, and you and I were like, "No, I think we're talking about the way he plays on the field." No, I, I just I'm literally watching him take a uh, do a throw in right now. By the way, the game is on in the next room where the replay's literally on in the second half right now. So, so. if so if Jay zones out while we're talking, it's because he's <laughs> watching some good stuff happen. It's, it's two nil in the sixty second minute. But anyways, uh, no, I just like his flair on the ball. I, I love other parts of the pitch, but every time he has the ball, um, it's it just feels like it's fun, and he's he's an entertaining position player. So he reminds me a lot of the way I like to watch like Marcelo. Or another yeah. left back, very le- talented does, left back. Does does a lot of his work when he has the ball without actually touching the ball. Yeah. It's like a lot of it's just with his hips to, to destabilize yep. or unbalance a defender, and yep. then he just sends the ball. I mean, he even fools me sometimes in the direction that he'll go on the ball. So, yeah, it's it's that was my my most fun. I love it. And his motor is absolutely unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the thing that I think makes him super special is that he never stops. He is the same in the 92nd minute that he is in the second yeah, minute. That's true. And that is all action. The amount of recoveries that he had in this game and other games where he's coming back and a, a player has the ball and they're trying to penetrate and he just takes the ball away because he's hustled back quicker than they expect him to. And every single time it's like, oh, where the fuck did that guy come from? Dude, it is. And it was so one thing, too, and then I'll stop. Uh, I'll stop sitting here and talking only about him. Uh, is when he moves, uh, he, his upper body doesn't work as much as a lot of other people who sprint. So, like, you'll see their upper body, and you're like, oh, man, they're trying really hard. Well, he's just like that kind of, like, sneaky quickness, where it's mm-hmm. like, holy shit, he's a lot faster than I thought he would be. Yeah, because so, yeah. he doesn't look like he doesn't look like he's pumping real hard. Right, that. he doesn't look like a, like a sprinter, you know, like that. But all of a sudden, it's like he's where he needs to be, and I'm happy he's there. I'm Matthew, do you, do you have a favorite thing you've been watching? Favorite part of the field? Um, I've been really impressed with... Um, I've been really impressed with with the wing play. Uh, I I said coming into the season, I guess it was after the uh, after the first match in preseason against Lenny United that I thought that this season uh, offensively would be defined by essentially the wingers uh, or or players getting wide and then making plays from wide. That's how we were going to score a lot of goals. Yeah, and. I think I think you've seen now in in two games and which is I realize a small sample size seven goals and five of them you could argue I I can get you all the way up to seven if you want to be real nitpicky about it 
have all those goals have, have come from the really come from wide play. Yeah, for sure. Even we, even the penalty was caused by right a, a, a Taylor Gray cross. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, like you you had uh, we can kind of go through the go through the goals here. You know, we had uh, Marcus Nagelstad's goal in the twenty third minute comes from a a big ball um, uh, cutting on the on the le- on the left foot yep. from Matai Wape that Taylor Gray heads back across. And so you get like that fun winger to winger back to center forward action. And Marcus was was in a was in a, a decent spot. He was central. He was in, he was central, but he was on on the like the far side of the outside back. Yeah, or our far side of the center back. Yeah, because he kind of like sneaks in. And so like that center back never actually realized when the ball went across. Yeah. Was, oh, he had no everyone, idea. Everyone was yeah. expecting that Taylor was going to go go to goal. Yeah, and he headed it across, which took out the goalkeeper, and it also took out two defenders who just didn't realize that. Marcus was just lurking. So if you notice, the the second of the center backs doesn't see Marcus, doesn't know he's behind him. That's his man. That's his mark. Turns and kicks Marcus. Uh, in So Marcus takes a good kick to the leg, and the defender goes down as if it was a foul on Marcus, which is hilarious. But Marcus, he doesn't know. Marcus was already on the ball and shooting. So Marcus shoots the ball in, a little tap in, and gets murdered with a big kick yeah. because that guy has no idea he's there. He's just fox in the box, be there at the But right that time. doesn't stop him from... So his celebration, like I couldn't tell from the stream exactly, but so you guys were there. Was he running, pointing at you guys? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. But, but honestly, I didn't see bit. any of that. I was too busy trying to <laughs> murder David Smotherman with a hug. Uh, I was losing my goddamn uh, mind. Dude, did you guys like that tweet? Or maybe you didn't see that. I know you, I saw that you uh, reposted it, but I was like, oh, shit. Uh, when you guys were on there, so I snapped the picture really quick. And then on the Section 109 Twitter, I put, we know those guys. Hell yeah. I can't be responsible for a Basically anything I I did or did not do. <laughs> okay, so l- let's uh, let's move on to the second goal because it was a freaking rocket. Yeah. So so a really I, I want to go back like two passes before we get to that goal. Okay. Yeah, sure. Because like Marcus collects the ball in the middle of the yeah. field, and th- this is this is in a sequence. Matai had just gone out in the thirtieth minute. We um, don't know why. We've with, heard it. We've heard it was a, a, a leg injury, maybe a hamstring, like, something. Yeah, but yeah. He, hopefully he's okay. So a few minutes, a few minutes prior, he goes out. Uh, sub Damien gets subbed in, and and the next sequence is some good attacking play. Doesn't come to anything. Yep. We get the ball. Excuse me. We get the ball back because we're just like it, it's one of those classic examples of like kind of a wave after wave attack. Yep. And we're able to keep the we we're able to keep the pressure on. We end up you know getting the ball back. It comes in the middle of the field. And then Marcus, as we've seen Marcus do, uh, just finds the open man. And so he slips a ball out uh, to Damien to get Damien one-on-one. Yep. And Damien drives a little bit. And for whatever I think reason— that's, I think that's that Taylor's ball? It's a no, Marcus's, it's ball, Marcus's ball. ball. It's a great ball. Yeah, I, th- I think Taylor's involved earlier in the, in the, in the play. Uh, he might have won it back or, or something like that. Uh, I forget exactly. Oh, hello, Mix. But— you know, Damien drives, and then Damien, you know, we normally we expect Damien to, like, drive and pick a side and go and look for either the shot or the, or the, or the cutback. And he gets in the moment. He recycles. And he just mm-hmm. stops, yeah. and he slips the ball into Luis Garcia Sosa. Yeah. And then stays. This is my favorite part. He just stays in his position. Yep. And so Luis Everybody is like. Everybody moves off of him. So Luis is doing that thing that sometimes left footers do where, like, the ball has to stay on their left foot. And so they're like. Contriving every single way possible to keep the ball on, on his left foot for a couple of seconds. Like all the dudes collapse on and, him, and all the defenders collapse, and it just opens up a nice little gap. And Louis slips it right back to Damien, who takes the touch, and then bam! Love the t- love the, the touch to set up to shot that felt just textbook, just beautiful. And like and you it was said, a rocket, like, absolute rocket. Yeah, and, awesome. and and one of and and I think so. Number one, like we know why Damien's here and why like D- Damien plays like really really good player. If you don't remember how uh, how Stumptown played in 2021 with Luis Garcia Sosa oftentimes pulling the strings. That's a little bit of what it looked like. Yeah, like just the kind of like he can he can hold the ball, let the defense collapse, and then slip in that final ball. I think that the thing that makes that play different too is that Luis doesn't end up recycling the ball. He doesn't recycle it back. He ends up playing a progressive he just, pass. He just holds his nerve. He he like in the middle of five guys, he spins around three times. And then plays the ball forward three yards to a wide open Damien. It's beautiful. It's yeah. really good stuff. But like that's another. So where, where I'm going with the wide play angle is that that's another example of the ball got wide. Now the ball went central again, and actually the goal is created from a central position. 
but it's Damien's drive from out wide. Yeah. Uh, and then recognition to, to play the ball back centrally causes the defense to destabilize. And while staying in his exact spot and, yeah. then he and waiting for a perfect ball Some, and rocketing it home. Sometimes you sneak in by like drifting out or running really fast. Right. He did the exact opposite. He just didn't move. Yep. Everybody yeah. else moved. Actually, I got to go back and watch that like a hundred times now. Yeah, yeah it's, definitely. It's really good. Let's talk about that third goal. So the third goal. Do we want to talk about the, the third goal of the game or our third goal? The third goal of the game just happened and I didn't say anything. Um, well, so we, yeah, anyway. look, I, I can, I think I, I can, I think I can, myself. I can sum this up. This is, er, we're early on in the season. Um, we are learning to make sure our players learn to make sure we keep the ball, right? We, Rod has said, control, control, control. We control the game by having the ball, right? How, yeah. how, how many games have they played together technically too? And this is pretty much a brand new squad. So exactly. Well, too. and this is one of the center backs playing with the ball mm -hmm. and he just quite frankly makes a bad decision to try to keep the ball when he should let it go out of bounds or he should just like hold it up for a second and wait. He plays a ball. He plays a square ball back across the field yeah. from the sideline and it gets intercepted. They have Instant numbers. Counter. Instant so counter. It's, it's, it, but it's just, it's shot. bad judgment that I don't, that I'm not worried about because this is part of the process. If you remember, we did this against Valley United. We did this against Atlanta United last year yeah. where we made plenty of similar <clears throat> plays, some of which got punished, some which didn't. But what we saw is that the season progressed. We made less and less of these bad decisions. Bad decisions happen. It was a bummer. But also, that is to be expected as part of the process. So I'm going to disagree with you here because it wasn't a bad decision. He could have gone back to the goalkeeper. He could have he could have played an accurate pass to JP. He just played an inaccurate pass. That's that's it. If, if he plays the ball directly at JP's feet, JP's got time to either play it back to the right hand side or, get it or go or go forward and diagonal to the left or or play between lines and gaps in the middle. But like that's JP and and of like it's just a real bad situation. JP can always hook it to the to the the far corner touch line and set up a throw in. I'm pissed no, for... it's it's a bad decision. And here's why it's a bad decision. There's five players on rushing or whatever towards JP. The safe play is just to play it back to Jean and control the, the game. We're the, up to the nothing. The ball was played 20 yards in front of JP though. I'm I'm well aware it was a bad pass as well, but it's a bad it's a bad pass to pass it all the way across the field. It's an unnecessary I, risk. I am believing your center back is out of the play and on the sidelines. It's a bad risk to take at that point in the yeah, game. Yeah, you are technically it, it putting the ball into midfield. It should have gone back to the to the goalkeeper. I'm but just well, you guys. You guys are having this conversation between each other, and I'm watching uh, Alex McGrath score from half field. So yeah. So <laughs> it, point being is, and I think my point still stands that this is part of the process. It's Correct. part of it the, is part of the process. it's part of the learning when to make the decisions. This is a new player who got here like two weeks before the season started. Like he's just learning the rod system. Rod system is unique. It is different, and yeah. it takes a while. And we're gonna get better and better, hopefully, as the season goes on, because these decisions will get more and more ingrained in in better and better so i'm not worried about it at all it's one blip it's a 4-1 game like uh, well uh, and the reason it doesn't matter is because alice mcgrath alice mcgrath shit. well yeah and what i was going to say too is i don't want to take i don't want the us talking about the bad play to take any credit away from des moines because they do have some good strikers on that squad who you can tell like when they're playing um people who are more on their level i feel like they have a pretty decent like front three oh, it's a, who, who I mean, bangs like that's goals. A, that's a good team. Yeah. Like that's got so that's did, got some ex pro. So I just like, wanted to team. say that that too. Like they they had an opportunity and and they absolutely they they did it. They buried it. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised to be honest with you if this Des Moines team if you put them up against Flower City for sure for last year, but even Flower City from this year, they do okay. A Detroit for, uh, Gold Star from this year, they'd be an even game. This I mean, is listen, a Nisa quality put, squad put, talent wise. If yeah. you put Des Moines. This Des Moines team, which let's ignore if there are any roster rules issues and things like that. But if you put this Des Moines team who played in the Open Cup, which may only be part of what their squad will be in the summer mm -hmm. for their summer season. Um, if you put that team into NISA and make them the 10th team in NISA for this year, I think they slot somewhere. Top five. In the, I, yeah. I mean, like, I, I think they're like right in that category of like, you know, if, if LA Force can elevate themselves. Um, you know they're they're probably in the in the, in the four the in the four five range. Mm. I have a question about LA Force, but let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to hold. Let's go to a, let's go to the happy moment. Now that we've discussed the one and only negative moment from the night, and it didn't end up mattering, obviously. The third goal. 
So that's a Marcus Ball out, right? Yeah. So, to Damian. So, so Marcus playing playing assist man tonight, not getting the direct assists, but playing all the hockey assists. So, so Marcus Marcus has a ball and scoring. Uh, and it, you remember, this is not this obviously the same the same type of scenario or anything that happened after that. But remember how sometimes Marcus ends up with the ball in a channel, uh, and he's he's. He's high up the field, but he's he's dropped in a little bit from his here, normal mix. position, and like he's able to find a, a player in space uh-huh. in front, like on rushing. And so so, he, so it's a through ball forward to Damien, but the goalkeeper. Yeah, so the goalkeeper gets there first. Otherwise, Damien's just going to round him and tap it in, and and the goalkeeper's bar comes out, and um, and Alex McGrath is just involved in the play, sees it, takes one takes one step, yep. ball comes in on a half volley. And McGrath just dude whips it. Just it's a completely side of the foot, like right. Just doink. Pitching, no, pitching no wedge. Yeah, yeah, pitching wedge. And, and, <laughs> and hands up. And yes, I I imagine I uh, had a couple drinks that was in, impacting my uh, field of of death perception and things like that. But I I really thought that ball was going to go forty five yards wide. And it was directly dead and it center. Was dead center in Didn't the goal. It, like, it was brilliant. It was so it was good. So straight. That is what you try to do with a sixty degree when you're trying to get over the bunker onto the green. Like that's that a, exactly what he did. That's right an there. early candidate for goal of the year, right there. Yep. And that is. And, and what it did do is it took the hope that Des Moines had. Like we had controlled the game, controlled the game. Limited, they got one back. Limited their chances. They had a great chance early in the second half that the Jean Antoine was able to able to. You to heard. Start. You heard. Save. You heard what the announcer. What she's the announcer. Heartbreaking. What she and did you see my tweet? I said more like heartwarming. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just you know they they like we made the mistake. They took advantage. They had life. They had hope. And it was just and then it was just immediately crushed. Yep. Shut down, which is switch the power off. So that's the like that's the type of dominance that we want to see. What uh, so in our first interview ever with Rod? What was it? Break the will. Yeah, hey, that I, was I it. don't want them to think they even have a chance. Take your like, chances. Boom, there you go. When they come, mm-hmm. and then break their will. Yeah. And while although like a third goal uh, would have been breaking the will to make it three zero, going three one like that is just as good. Uh, for, for like you as a team, like them, I think it was probably worse. Yeah. I mean, like that was the end. That was the end of Des Moines created three big chances all night. There was the one in the first half right before our second goal. When you're talking about breaking the will, mm-hmm. like could mm-hmm. have been one, one, then literally like next play it's, it's two, one or two, two or two, zero. Sorry. They had that one. They had the, the, the chance that, that Antoine smothered and they had their actual goal. And even after, the sequence that that was that was truly it like yeah. otherwise it was just a we're just kicking the ball around for another 20 minutes here yeah. yeah yeah so let's go to the fourth goal so speaking of breaking will i think that the fourth goal is a product of number one them pushing to try to get another goal and yes. them being too far up the field yeah but it's also just there's a little bit less effort in my mind on that goal than there was in the first uh half because juan louis getting pushed out wide He's getting pushed further out. So it's a, it's a nice ball in that Taylor gets. Marcus has been subbed out. Um, Taylor's now moved up top. Um, I want to point out Juan Louis wins the header. This is a ball that like we clear. Juan Louis wins the header, and it falls to Taylor, who like, just good like, patience. has to like do a little hold-up play, different the way that you see like a, a big back-to-goal number nine holds yeah. the ball up. It's yeah. just different. A little more of an open field hold-up, and it allows time for Juan Louis to come back into the play and start running down. And if you watched a little of Syracuse last year, this is kind of a classic thing for Juan Louis to do. He can get, ver- especially if he's going to play that left wing position, he can get vertical and get vertical fast. fast. And yeah. Taylor just slips him in. Juan Luis off to the races. He had a wide open. I was gonna say Damien was by himself. Oh, if he doesn't, dude, if, he, right if he doesn't score, we're all mad. Oh, 100%. He passed up. He passed up a, a brilliant tap in. But it's just like what Rod says about long but shots, right? You're not allowed to take long shots. You are allowed to score long shots. Yeah, yeah. And 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 look, the, like he had. The the XG on Damien is going to be a tap in, right? But like the XG on on or on uh, on one Louis is still really nice. Yeah, it's from, a good finish. It's in the side netting, right I mean, off the inside great, of the post. It's a great like, finish. It's, like, a great, finish. it's a great finish. Yeah, happy for awesome. for one Louis to open his account for CFC. Yeah, happy for him to do it uh, in the city that he went to college. Like very very cool. That's cool. Happy for Taylor, who's just 
getting these balls to these people who need to score goals. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit real quick about Matthew being an asshole and being like, I think Taylor Gray needs to be much more creative and, and provide more assists because he wasn't good enough last year or something of that. I'm very much paraphrasing and putting some words in Matthew's mouth. <laughs> and then Taylor Gray came out and went, two, first two games, two assists per game. Go fuck yourself. Uh, like, he just absolutely... Um, put Matthew's thing and like raised it more than you could ever like dude, hope that he would raise dude, it. Dude, and Taylor, that wasn't uh, his only shining, like besides the two assists, like his, his play like in the field was awesome too. Like sometimes he does things where I'm like, that guy's a proper footballer. So, so Taylor. Every, Cause he's and, really fast, but like he is technically gifted with his feet. At it's the same not, time. it's not the speed that makes Taylor special. It's his, Ability to do unpredictable things, yeah. and, and then love, has, I love and, seeing him in a one on one. And sometimes, setup. and sometimes it's beating it's beating someone one on one, yeah, and then providing a ball, which we've seen a lot of times this season already, yeah. more so than even last season. But it's also when he's not involved in in goal contributions, it can even be the unpredictability to make sure that we keep and hold possession, yeah, like him cutting in. Doing you know some fancy dribble work and then just recycling the ball. And before well before this goal, I'm pretty sure like when he got possession, it wasn't just like he thumped the ball forward a little bit, then passed it. Like he had a little flick or something. Yeah. I mean, like early in the second half, he takes a shot from outside the box uh, because he sees the keeper like just two steps two steps too far from to the inside, and he hits that thing side netting. Like that that would have been I mean could have been real real good. Uh, no, he's been he's been incredible, and, and and just it's been it's been incredible to watch so far. So I'll, I'm going to put out two things. Number one, if we continue, and, and somebody pointed this out to me this morning, um, shout out Chairman uh, or yesterday, I guess it would shout out Chairman Paul Rustand, who uh, said if if we have two goals for every one Marcus goal from other goal scorers, and Marcus continues to do what he did last season, we're going to be better. And he's right. Yeah. Like we're going to get a lot of extra um, stuff. Hey, mix. You see a you see a little friend outside the window. Huh? Um, the other piece is we Marcus is getting that one goal a game that he told us on this podcast that yeah. he wanted. Right. Yeah. He basically said, and I'm going to paraphrase that. Like I would rather score one goal per game than get five and one and then go four without. He's like, I'd rather just get one per game because I feel like I've done my job. I feel like you know, I feel good. I just want at least one goal per game. And he's getting that one goal. It's two games in. Like let's be clear. But like. Two goal, two games in, three goals and four goals. Marcus gets one each game. The rest of the wings are um, really contributing. The second thing I want to go over is we didn't talk about the lineup, which was unchanged yep. from week one. Yep. We have said that we think this is um, the deepest team we've ever had as a pro team, and the lineup's already been unchanged two weeks in a row. That Yeah. Well, sometimes you just ride with it. And and you know what I'm not comp- like we he had, Rod has made more subs this year yep. I think um, and we've seen that no matter who's playing on the wing so I'm gonna go right to my third takeaway so I don't have to go over the lineup um, well I'll go over the lineup real quick the back four uh, plus Jean Antoine is Jung Woo So Prepolitza Bowers and Perez um, Jung Woo So and Perez as your outside backs Anatoly and Aiden Bowers as your center backs Alex McGrath Luis Garcia Sosa as your free eights slash tens uh, Richard Dixon as your holding midfielder uh, Mutai Muwape on the right wing for Damian Rodriguez in the 30th minute, which we talked about. Um, hopefully, Mutai is okay. Uh, Beto came in for Luis in the 81st minute. Taylor Grace started at left wing, and he moved up top after Nagelstad subbed off. Um, and Nagelstad sub- subbed off as your starter in the 81st minute for Juan Luis. So, number one, we saw some more subs. Number two, we saw an unchanged lineup, both of which I'm I'm fascinated by. I actually don't have a lot of takeaways from that yet, but I think it's fun, and I think it's interesting. Um, but I want to go to my first takeaway, which we've already basically covered, so I'm just going to get through it quickly. Wing play. So, wing play, again, was key. The service from Mwape's left foot has been chef's kiss. Sorry for anyone who just heard a big kiss in their ear. But <laughs> he, it has been so good. He has been an absolute difference maker. His ability to either, whether it's on the left side or the right side, juke in on one foot and then get on that left foot and play a, an extremely dangerous ball. I mean, that ball for Taylor that he plays that he plays and then Taylor plays back across That's beautifully placed is absolutely phenomenal. He had a little chip over the top that was inches away from creating a one-on-one in the first half. Um, he has been just electric. He's him and Taylor's connection has been visible on the field. They asked Mwape after the game about it. Uh, I think last game they had a little, mm-hmm. little snippet yeah. and he said, you know, I mean, me and Taylor, we just like each other in practice and like, we just, you know, we feel each other. We kind of know where each other, like you can tell there's some chemistry there and it's beautiful. Yeah. And I want to see that continue to develop. I'm really happy about that. And, Two two winger subs in Juan Louis, 
and Damian Rodriguez two yep. additional goals. Yep. Our wingers scored. Uh, yeah. Our wingers. I'm watching one that we score right now. In yeah. The replay. That's and like it's it's just the wing play has been really good. It's been much improved. Yep. Um, as Matt said earlier, and I, I won't add, any, I won't belabor that point. Uh, I'll go to. I'm just going to finish my takeaways real quick. We have real pros. Um, the referee was bad in this game, especially in the first half. You can see Richard Dixon uh, get visibly upset, which does not happen very often. He was yelling at the referee. He was pumping his hands. He was very upset. It didn't matter. Good teams overcome the referee. I've said this before. I've complained about like sometimes our lack of composure in some of our earlier pro seasons or some of our amateur years. This is a different team. Good teams overcome bad refereeing. And our we had pros. And you can see their amateurs for Des Moines on the stream. They get, got pretty upset and visibly, I think, had issues with the referee. And we didn't. We still had some moments, but we still overcame the bad refereeing. We didn't let it slow us down. And I was very happy about that. Real pros. Uh, and our last thing, our outside backs caused some serious problems slash cleaned up a lot of messes. So the fact that Rod is playing the two back and then the Richard and the two outside backs in a line, and then those outside backs are free to kind of go end-to-end, box-to-box, run around. They cleaned up so many messes defensively. We already talked about Perez, but Jung Woo So on the other side did the same thing. They were constantly running back and recovering the ball, getting back and getting a, a foot in or a steal that the other team was not expecting. Those outside backs are incredibly important, and right now, at least, they are functioning very, very well. This was Jung, Jung Woo So's best game. Agreed. Yeah, um, yeah. The shout, like, we need to give him a big shout out because his game and how I feel about him, at least when I'm watching, comes in waves. Um, but but only because like in the final third, or not even in the final third, but more like build up play. Sometimes there's just like a little bit that I'm like asking for maybe that one extra pass, one more touch to something else. Um, but that's in that field of the play, which I see him. Definitely being able to get better, but in his position and what he did defensively, yeah, yeah, absolutely it, it, it's, perfect. It's small what you things, want your back. It's to do. small things on the offensive end, uh, like playing the ball into the wrong foot or or things like that. But what he what he has allowed us to do is uh, he's allowed us to ride essentially two injuries, uh, both, at, both at that position. At, at that position, we're, you know, Partita and Colin Stripling. Yep. Uh, he's allowed us to just like ride through that, and started every single game in the preseason. Right, and, and, and like season. and look, he struggled in preseason, but a lot a lot of guys did. the 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 pace and 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 physicality was just different playing some of these teams in preseason, and and you we have seen what what we thought was going to happen, but you never know until you see it, you know, live. Is that the when once the level of competition dropped down to what it's going to be for the whole season. Like all of a sudden, like little extra space opens up. Guys have, have had to make decisions a lot faster, mm-hmm. so they're able to punish when the space does open. Yeah, for sure. Just better than they were in preseason. Hundred percent. And, and as they get into that rhythm, it's been really, really, really good. And, and and yeah, like Jung is playing outside back. We don't need him to have seven assists on the year. Playing like in that pinched in outside back role. Like his his job is to keep possession. And clean up things. Yep. It was exactly what and, he did. And yes, he, and he like a great. He nailed. He nailed that game. aspect of his job. A hundred percent. Well, we got about five minutes left, so let's roll through the three takeaways for. Right. Uh, do you want me? To, do you want me to do yours? Or do you want me to do mine? Uh, I'll go ahead and do mine, mine first. Mine will be quick because uh, your last takeaway is a, a good place to to sort sort of wrap this up. Oh, on. Okay. So, takeaway number one: survive in advance. The U.S. Open Cup is like playoffs in your league. Uh, it's just a, a rolling competition. Like sometimes you get playoffed, we did not get playoffed. Uh, we were the better team. We, we we won the we won the big moments. We did make a mistake that led to another goal, mm-hmm. and right back at it we put the pressure on. Got a little luck our way, then just managed the game professionally. Uh, that's what you got to do in these in, in these situations. And it was really 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 good to see. Uh, number two, we kind of talked about this. Two games, four assists. Taylor Gray is out here proving me. Uh, proven, prove, I wouldn't say proven me wrong because I challenged him to, 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 to provide. You know, Which, by the way, he has no idea. I'm sure. Yeah. He's not. He's not listening <laughs> no, to this no, podcast. No. But like, he's that's <laughs> that's what we needed. I felt like that's what we needed to to be better, to be more dynamic, uh, and to be more dangerous more often. And so far, so far, so good. And, and we've also gotten like the same level of production from Mattia Moape or slash Damian Rodriguez. Uh, on that right-hand side. It's been a really, really good start to the season. 
And number three, personnel is policy. I say this all the time, but especially up uh, a couple goals, which we were in, in, in both of these games, the first part of the season, the sub of Juan Louis playing left wing and moving Taylor up top has turned this group now into an incredibly counterattack heavy team. And, and, and I don't mean like counterattack is and we're going to sit back and bunker and counter more of a quick strike. Yeah. You invite a little bit of pressure, but like, because Taylor plays here. the nine differently than, uh, than Marcus does. And one Louis provides a very different threat on the left-hand side than Taylor does. Like he's not inverted and he's a left footer play on the left side and he can just get vertical. And that's, that's a really nice, good look, especially when you're up a goal and teams are pushing and that there's that little extra space in behind. Yeah. Now, I want to point out uh, that we had a player announcement this week as well that we should just blow by here real quick. Uh, it's it's an, it's number nine, an, an additional forward player, uh, Lenworth Lopez. We call him Lenny. What an excellent name, by the way. Lenworth. Len- <laughs> Let's <laughs> fucking go. Uh, he, he comes to us from... from Double uh, L, baby. He comes to us from Iona. Uh, and he's played, I think he played uh, League Two last summer in, for Nona FC in Florida um, and scored some goals there. And, and, and like he's like six foot three, I think 180. Like he's a little bit more of an ath- athletic number nine. Uh, we'll, uh, I assume we'll see him eventually get bedded in uh, to the group. So that's, that's also an additional potential other look, both late in games, um, but also as a, as a full on change. Uh, potentially, so that's that's really good. That's gonna be really interesting to see. All right, Jay, what are you? I've been holding it into uh, Jung Woo So also has a lot of energy. I really like him getting back. He reminds me of Perez, just kind of on the right I side. I agree. With getting you back. Know, Sorry, I just you, had to say that. But one other thing, when he takes a step and he gets going, like dude's got some wheels. Yeah, he's quick. He can, mm-hmm. and he goes. He he takes that first step and he gets up to speed and he beats two or three guys with that first couple steps and it can be a real problem counterattacking late in games or or creating mismatches with numbers early on. Yep. Okay. Um, for me, my first one, mine are really fast. My first one's goals, uh, seven goals in two games. It's pretty awesome. And I love to see it. That's really about that. Uh, the other one is depth, which we've talked about. I'm not going to go in depth. Uh-huh. Hey, um, I'm not going to go in depth on that. Yeah, I know. Um, because we've, we, we've mentioned it a, a couple times now, but my third one is, uh, Everyone, especially if you're a fan and you listen to this and you enjoyed those goals as much as we did and you feel a little bit of hype right now, get your ass to Birmingham. Yeah, so last, be the, last night U.S. Soccer did the draw. Right. We drew away to Birmingham. It'll be either April 25, which is a Tuesday, or April 26, which is a Wednesday. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be on Wednesday, and here's why. Unless they have stadium, stadium availability um, issues, they are on the road the weekend before that Birmingham, as I looked this up this morning. Um, so me and Timmy were talking about this. So if they're on the road, they're probably going to want an extra rest day coming home because of travel. So it's pretty likely, unless they have some issues, because they're Wednesday home the on the weekend. It'll be Wednesday unless they have stadium issues. And they play at uh, Legion yeah. Field, right, which is where UAB Protect, plays. Too. So, protective stadium, but so yeah. It's so, okay, protective stadium. So it's it's big. Like it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, gonna, it's I've gonna seen be a football game. It's going to be a cavern. Uh, yeah. And on a Wednesday night, there may not be a ton of Birmingham people there. We can get loud. Which means we can get real loud. Yep. Now, Birmingham, like it's, it's, it's like that classic Finley Stadium situation where they can still have several thousand people. But because it's a cavern, like right. you know, like we we bunch ours, you know, mostly in the in the middle and on one side. They don't necessarily do that. Yeah. So, like, we can we might be able to take this thing over. Where we get a few hundred people down there, dude. It'd I'm be sick. I'm looking forward to it. Well, boys, that's our wrap up. That's our game recap. Um, can't wait for <laughs> that. We have a little break here before our next game. We go to San Diego uh, midweek. Uh, it's Sunday. No, Sunday, 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 April the. Something sixteenth, and so we'll we'll see if we get a, some other podcasts out before then. But we will for sure have a game recap for that one. Thanks, boys, for joining me super early this morning. Peace.